So I have a really interesting React challenge problem that I think you guys should try to solve yourself if you're trying to just learn more about React. And if you wanted to like get practice with an interview, I think this would also be a good one to do. So we have three presents here. And the idea of what we're trying to solve is we want to have presents that potentially nest smaller presents, right? So for example, this present over here, when you open it, it actually had two more presents inside of it. That's pretty cool, right? This one, if you click it, it happened to just have one smaller present inside of it. And at some point, when you open the present enough, it'll just disappear. Okay, so we'll do the same thing with this one. Uh, this one, I think, is empty. And if you click on this, we opened it up, we found a smaller one. We click it again, we find even a smaller one. And then finally, you click it, and it's super teeny tiny, and you click it again, it's gone. So that's the problem. Can you implement this in React? I think it's going to be a nice challenge for an intermediate slash beginner. So definitely follow along if you want to see how this was built. Let's just go ahead and jump into the code and solve this together. So what I like to do before solving the problem is think about the data structure. I think it's really important to understand how your data is going to be structured. Because usually your components are just a reflection of the data, right? Um, they represent the data. So let's just go ahead and make like a presence object. And let's think about what we're doing. So you have a present, and inside that present, it can store other presents, right? You could have potentially two boxes inside of one box. And inside those two nested boxes, you could have more nested boxes. It turns out that that type of data structure is kind of like a tree or like a map, I guess you could say. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have presents equal to an object that has the property of presents. And this could be an array, okay? Now, I'm using TypeScript, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a type here called present, and that is going to be a type that has presence, which is just going to basically point to more presence, right? So it's a node point to a node point to more nodes. So inside of this presence array, you could put more nested objects, right? So I could say presence. And then I could also copy and paste this whole object. And we can do it again. Now I'm going to go ahead and just like kind of do the same thing. But just on the left one, I'm going to go ahead and just add a nested there. And just in case, for those who don't really understand like what this data structure looks like, um, again, it's just a graph. So we have this node, which is this one here. And that one points to some presence on the left. Also some presence on the right. Okay, because that's this nested object here is the left one. And then this nested object here is the right object. Turns out that this one doesn't have any nested presence, right? So it's just, this is where it ends. That's the end of the line for that one. But for the one on the left, it does have more nested presence. It has one nested presence. So I can just go ahead and draw an arrow here, and we will do this. Now, I will say this is more like a tree data structure. I think what we have over here represents more of like a tree. But that's kind of like the visual representation of it, except for imagine we're going to actually have presence. Let's go back to the code, and let's try to display these presence on the page. Okay, I already brought in a PNG. Um, I used OpenAI to kind of generate this. And we're going to try to basically display the top level thing um, inside of a React component here. So for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and add an image. I'm going to say source is equal to present. Because I think I have that imported as an image up here. Notice here I'm importing the present image. I'm using Vite, and that's why I'm able to do this. Um, if you're not, you probably have to have like a public directory and then have like an actual absolute path to your PNG. All right, so now we have a present displaying on the page. It's a little large. So what I'm actually going to do is go to the CSS. And I'm just going to go ahead and just make all the images. They're going to be width of 100 and height of 100 pixels. Okay, there we go. And then also the entire page, I'm going to say body. I'm going to say display a flex. I'm going to say justify content center. And then I'll say align items center. Hopefully that puts it in the center of the page. I think I also need to say height is going to be 100 bh. So now the present is centered on the page. And if I zoom in a little bit, here we go. So now what we want to do is if you click on the present, we want to open it up. Okay. Now what does opening a present mean in terms of the data? It basically means you want to take this one and kind of like get rid of it. And then you want to move these two things up. Okay. So now that I think about it, this problem would probably be better solved with um, if this was an array of presents. Instead of just an object that has presents, it's an array of presents. So I might go back and change the data structure just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and just wrap this in an array. Okay. And it just happens to only have one present in it. So what we want to do is we want to kind of in the code in React, we want to loop over all of the top level objects of this array. So basically loop over this one single present that happens to be in that array. 
and we want to display it. So how do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and just do a map. And we'll say presence.map. I'll say present. I'm going to rename some of this stuff because it's getting a little bit confusing. I'm going to rename this the present image. So we don't have like overloading on the names. And then in the map function, we can just go ahead and return that image. Okay, so now, um, technically we don't even need this. There's nothing inside of these data structures that we need. There's no name or item or title or anything. So it's like, we just need the representation of the data to drive how the UI is going to look. So let's make sure this works. You go back to the UI, not working. And that is because I forgot to put a return statement here. So a rookie mistake that will probably happen a lot in your career is implicit returns and explicit returns. Um, I typically try to just do explicit returns unless it's super simple. In this case, I mean, this is a super simple example. So you can just do like an implicit return here. But then you got to remember the wrap stuff in parentheses. But now I'll go back, we have the present displaying on the page and that's good. Now we also got an error down here saying that everything you loop over should have a key. In our case, I think we can get away with just using the index, but if you did have some type of unique ID that was attached to every present, you should probably use that. Um, it's not recommended to ever use indexes when you're using keys, um, but I think in our case, we should be okay. Okay, so let's verify this works. Right now it shows one present, but again, if I were to go over here and just add like another object to this array and call it presents, and give it an empty array here, we should see two. Okay, do you understand how that's kind of working? So if I add another right here, just add one more, or maybe even two more, save that, we see four. So all that's doing is looping over the top level objects of this array and displaying all of them. And that happens to be four objects. Okay, so now we need to add logic where basically if you were to click on one of these images, we want to go ahead and just like replace the current index that we clicked with the nested presence. And in this case, if we were to click on one of these two right side presence, it should just get rid of them. Like we want the present to kind of just go away. Um, so let's go ahead and try to do that. And if you were to click on this one, you basically need to replace this object with an array of these objects. All right, so let's try this. It might be a little bit um, complicated to figure out at first, but I'm going to wrap this in a button so that now we can actually click these things. And we could potentially style the button to like not look that bad. So for right now, we'll just hard code the styles here and I'll say background is none. That should get rid of that background. I think there's also like a border. And then also we could say cursor is pointer. So the idea, if we click on this one right here, we want to actually replace this one with whatever nested amount of presence that we happen to have. And if we were to click on one of the right ones, it would just get rid of it. Okay. So let's go ahead and add an on click here. I'll say on click. And we're going to call a function here. And depending on the index of the present you clicked, you're basically going to have to get the current present from that array, which we already have here, right? We have the actual present that we clicked. And we want to modify the existing presence array and kind of replace the index that we just clicked with the children of that object and kind of spread it into the array, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and say set presence. And I'm going to say like cur presence. That's going to be a function. So what you could do, so what you can do in this method is I'm going to say return cur presence, and I'm going to do flat map. Okay, we're going to try this out, and then we're going to go ahead and get the current value. So I'll just say like value. Um, that might be all we need. But basically, what you need to do is as you're looping through every value here, we're going to check we're currently on the matching index that was clicked. So now as we're looping through that array, I'm going to say return and then index if they're equal. I could probably rename this to be something better. It might make more sense to call this like clicked index. Okay. And this will be like the current index we're looping over. So if they're equal, we know that we want to return the value dot presence. Otherwise, let's just return the value. All right, so now let's go ahead and visualize what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and just console log presence here so we can kind of look at that in the Chrome browser. And let's just refresh. So if you look at the current state of presence, you can see it's just an array of three objects. The first one has a presence property with two nested objects in it. And these have just one nested object. So if I were to click on the last one, What's going to happen is it's just going to delete. And now only the two left ones remain. So I'm click on the right one again. Now we're just left with the last one, which has two nested presents in here. Okay, so it seems like it's working. If I go ahead and click on this one, it should split it into two. 
Okay, that's pretty good. This one has one nest in it, so if I click it, it should just delete it, and um, we should see that one. This one is empty, and this one's empty. So that kind of solves it, but I do want to add some finishing touches on this. I want to make the presents get smaller the further down they are, like the nest, because it doesn't make sense to have the exact same size present nest and inside the exact same size parent present. So I think one way that we could do this is I'm going to go ahead and just convert this to an if statement so it's a little bit easier to read. I'm going to say if index is equal to clicked index and then else I'm going to do return value, move this up here. And what I'm trying to do here is I want to kind of attach something to the, the nested array of presence here so we can keep track of the size, like the, the depth. Okay, so let's just go ahead and say return value of presence dot map. I'll say present. And we want to return dot 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 present. And I'm going to add a property called scale. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just start it with like 0.8. And so what this allows us to do is the image itself, we should be able to use that scale variable. What would also be good is add a scale here, which is like a number but it's also optional, so we can kind of use that in our code down here. So hopefully, if I can figure this out, we're going to add a style here. And we're going to add a style object. And I think there's a way to scale stuff. And I think you can pass like a number. So if I just do like 0 0.5, what happens here? Does it make them smaller? It does. Also, if I just do 0 0.5 with a number, does that work? It doesn't seem to work. I think you have to use a string. So luckily, we could just go ahead and um, cast that current scale that we're at. So I'm going to go ahead and just say, get the present that we have here that we haven't actually used yet. So let's grab that present. I'm going to do back ticks so I can do string interpolation. And I'm going to get the scale. And if it doesn't exist, we're going to fall back on one. This is called the nullish OLS. So if this thing is undefined or null, I do believe it'll fall back on the one here. Now, we have to also remember that as we go on, we're going to have to like scale down further and further and further. So I think the way we can achieve that is instead of just setting it to 0.8, you can actually multiply it by the presence current scale. Otherwise, we could just maybe give it a 0.9 again. Or just give it a 0.8. And I'm going to go ahead and just do this. There we go. So if you know math, when you do a decimal times a decimal, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, right? 0.8 times 0.8 will give you a smaller number. So hopefully, if I did this right, I'm going to click on the small present, and now it gets broken up into two smaller presents. If I click on the big one, it should go away. The big one should go away. Click on the very left one, it should have one more nested small one in it. It kind of works, but not yet. Like, if I click on this one, it should have scaled even more. So I think there's an issue over here where I think instead of using present scale, I need to use value scale. So let's try that again. There we go. Now, I think it might make more sense to do times by 0.5 and default this to 1, since that would be probably more accurate to what's going on down here. So just so basically make it go in half each time. And at some point, it'll probably get too small that you'll never even be able to see the present. If I just nest this a couple times, nest it here a couple times, now we have a bunch of random presents on the screen. And if I go and just start clicking them, There you have it. So hopefully I didn't completely confuse you with this implementation, but I do think this is a pretty cool problem when it comes to uh, tree-like data structures and kind of like traversing the tree and how we're kind of like emulating the whole idea of nesting uh, presence inside of each other. So but yeah, let me know if there's a different approach that you would have taken to solve this. There's some cleanup I'd probably do. And maybe if I have more time, I think about restructuring some of this code. Um, but overall, I mean, I think this is decent enough. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to kind of hang out or talk to some other developers. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.